Hello, and welcome to a very special class today. I have a fun project we're going to do, especially for you, Ian, and George, and Luke, and Josh. Let me show it to you. Then I want to show you a big surprise. So here's what we're going to do today. I thought you boys would really like doing a snake. And the girls will probably like it too, but I was especially thinking of you boys. Now for my surprise, we have a surprise guest. Miss June is with us today. <laughs> She's sitting right by me and she has her little bird with her. And we got her a good chair so she doesn't fall off. <laughs> and we hope the table doesn't fall over. So let's go over our supplies together. I have my crayons, my oil pastels, a pencil, an eraser, and a Sharpie. We're going to draw this, then we're going to use crayons and color it in, and then we're gonna make a layer of oil pastels here. We're going to scumble, and we'll talk about that a little later. So let's get started. You have your pencil, sweetie? Okay, the first thing, shall I move this? Oh, and I have a paper towel too, just in case we make some kind of mistakes or we want to cover up some of our picture. Very good, you've got yours. Okay, so the first thing let's do is let's draw these lines across our paper kind of in the middle for our branch. And it's okay if you draw it darker, all the way across. Good, June. And it's fatter on one side than the other. It's, it's a skinnier branch here. Very good, ooh, excellent. Now I'm going to start this section, June, I'm gonna start this section right here and draw his head. So I'm going to make it come over. This will be the top first loop. He's gonna come over and then he's gonna come down. His head is gonna hang down like that. June, I'm gonna give you a picture of my snake you can have for you. Okay, I have it here. Maybe you can have this, you can look at it while you're drawing. Would that help you? Would it, you like that? Okay, now we're gonna go back and we'll do some erasing to fix things, okay? So now I want to make this look like it's going behind, his body's going behind. So I'm gonna start here and go up to that branch right there. And then here I'm gonna come down. He's just hanging there. Now see this part right here? That is too fat for me, so I'm going to fix that. I'm going to use my eraser. I'm going to erase it. How's it going, honey? Now, any of those lines that we don't like, we'll erase together in a few minutes, okay? All right. So now let's make them go up and over. Right there. A loop. One thing about a line. It's okay, we're going to erase it together. Don't worry about it. A line is like a little dot that keeps moving. Did you know that? And it can go curved. This is a curved line. It can go straight. It can go vertical, horizontal, wavy. It can be fat. It can be skinny. Okay, so here I am. I'm going to go down here. Make a little curl underneath. I'm gonna help you in just a minute. Let me finish this, okay? Then I'm gonna come help you. Okay, so I'm gonna bring, this is the underneath part of him. Right here, I'm gonna make him go over one last time, come down, here's his tail, pointy, pointy. I'm gonna bring this back up to here. Okay. So just a minute, I'm going to help June do some erasing. Okay, here. 
Notice how I hold my fingers apart like this when we're erase, erasing to hold down the paper. You got it. You did it really good. I like that. So I'll just put it in for you real lightly and then you can trace it, okay? Will that work? Okay, you can do that here and here and here and over there. This is a long snake, June. Okay. Whoops. <laughs> you got to get it just right. June, do you like the color? Yes. Okay, so here we go here. Look at him. June, he's working. And then here, let's get his, let's get his, let's get his head. How does his head go? It goes down here like this, right? Kind of so many lines, you get a little mixed up. We'll fix it though. See how it works good if you hold on when you erase? Okay. There. Okay, you can draw his, you can draw his um, tongue on there and put his eyes on him, okay? We got him pretty good. Seems like I need to fix him right here. He needs to... This is where he needs to go over. Right here. Then he comes under here. Then he goes over up, up here. Okay, good eyes. All right. Is this where he goes over? Yeah. How does this thing work? <laughs> okay. He's coming down this way. Now, June, let's erase this line right here. And... And we got to erase this line. See, I'm going to put an X on. I want you to erase this one and erase this one. Now hold your fingers like this when you erase, okay? That'll work really well. You want to use this eraser? Okay. Let me have that one. Thank you. Okay, so now I'm going to put on some eyes right here. And I'm going to give him a forked tongue. There he is. He's just hanging around. So now I've got him. He's, see, uh, he's behind this stick here. He's going to come up here. He's in front of the stick. And I'm gonna, yes, I'm going to erase that. It does get a little confusing. This one. Here's where he's behind, and here's where he's in front. And then we'll erase these. Now, if you need, if this is going too fast for you and you need a little extra time, it's good. You can always pause it and catch up. So now when I look at my snake, I gotta fix this one. He's in front on this loop. Look, he's in front. Now he's behind. Now he's in front. Now he's behind, now he's in front, and he's behind again. This is a long snake. The next thing I'm going to do to my snake, yours is looking good. I like it. I'm going to make some stripes. See how we have these stripes? You may make your stripes any way that you want. You could make them close together, like these are, or you can make them further apart, like June's. Okay, June, can you make your stripes? Use your pencil. That's what we'll do now. I'll see, I'm gonna give him a stripe here. And I'm gonna give him one here. And here. You see how I'm making him kind of curved looking? Because his body is round. He has scales. He does crawl on the dust of his belly. Remember who said that? 
Okay. Snakes come in all kinds of colors. Actually, they do really, they can do really good things. They, do you know snakes can eat mice and rats, frogs, bugs? I hope they eat slugs. Because I have slugs in my garden. And if they eat them, and stink bugs, stick bugs, okay, that would be good. A stick bug? Wow. Okay, so now I'm going. Oh, good. Okay, keep making your stripes. I'm going to pick my colors now. Now, I've chosen to use warm colors because I really like this contrast of these two colors and it makes it stand out. So my background would be a complementary color. Remember the complementary colors? They're the opposite of each other on the color wheel, like red and green. If you look at a color wheel, I have one here, but it's hiding. Oh, it's over there. Could you hand it to me? Thank you. I'll just show you this really quickly. See how orange and blue are opposite? Red and green. Can you see it, June? Purple, purple and yellow. They make their, each other really stand out and give, it's almost like they give each other a compliment and say, oh, I will, if I stand by you, I will, that will make you look really nice. So I'm going to use a comp complimentary colors between my background and my snake. So pick your colors, whichever ones you want to use. Like I said, I'm going to use orange and reds. I'm going to use warm colors. I'm not going to just scribble it in and I'm not even really going to outline it because I am in the in a minute I'm going to outline it with a black sharpie. So I'm going to make my stripes orange. Now this might take you a while to get this done, especially if you made a lot of really skinny little stripes. It might take longer. Snakes are something you see in the summertime and in the springtime at garden snakes. I used to have these really big snakes around when I was a little girl. They were called bull snakes. They weren't very pretty. They were really, really big and long. You know where I would see them? They would come around our chicken house looking for baby chicks. <laughs> That's why I did not like them. All right. So I'm coloring these in kind of quickly. Oh, I think I colored the wrong thing there. I should have colored this one, but that's okay. I made a little mistake. I'll fix it. Coloring in my stripes with my nice new box of crayons. New crayons are really pointy. I like them. All right. Doesn't have to be perfect because I'm probably going to come back with another color over and do some fun touch up. Okay. So now I'm going to choose another warm color. Maybe a lighter one. Is this, a, is this too close to the same? Maybe I'll use yellow. I think I'll use yellow at least on part of him. Are you ready to start coloring, June? Oh, you are so good at making stripes. That is great. So this one is really a snake that you could see from far off. He's not very camouflaged, is he? You know, when I was doing this project, I remembered this story we used to do the meeting board when John Williams and Joel Frost and Johnny O and Jim and 
Donald, and who else is in there? George. Oh, Josh and Joseph Martinez. I can't remember who else. I hope I'm not forgetting. Who? Yes, Anne Marie and Laura. And oh, I can't remember who else. Who? Oh, yeah, Emily, right. Well, we would do the meeting board, and we had this big stick, and everybody would get to take turns. And we painted it black and red. And we called it the Bandy Bandy, because in Australia, <laughs> in Australia, there's this snake called the Bandy Bandy, and it's black and red. And it was always this big deal when it was your turn to do the pointing. Hold the stick Point the bandy bandy. We had it for a couple of years, I think. All right. Here is my snake. Now I'm coloring this pretty quickly. June, are you starting to color? Yeah. Oh, good. What color are you using? Red. Red? Ooh, that's nice. Okay, I'm going to take my black and I'm going to do his eyes black. I don't know if snakes have black eyes. I think I'll give him a black tongue. Okay. Now I'm going to do the stick. And I'm going to use layers here because I want it to have texture. So I'm just going to I'm going to do it on the side of my crayon because my crayon is new and it works really well to do this. I'm just going to rub it in. I like it bumpy like that. A lot of texture. It makes, it makes me think if I touch this picture, it would feel rough. All right. Of course, it's a trick. That's what we do. We take flat paper and we can use our elements of art and make it. We can make texture. Okay, I'm going off a little bit, but that's good. Now I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use a little black. Layers. Layers seem like it makes it look a little more real. You're going to use all red or just red and yellow or what, June? Ooh, ooh, I like it. Okay, there's some black on there. I'm going to use one last color. Gray, if I can find it. There it is, hiding. I'm going to put some gray on here. Oh yeah, see how that really changes it? Just putting that third color on top. I'm pressing a little harder, but you can't really see too many stripes. Just kind of soft, textury strokes. I like that. Okay, now I have to touch up my snake because I see there's a few places I missed. Okay. Right here I missed with that, this orange, I think. Fix that. And then, I don't know if I can scrape that off with my fingernail a little. Probably not. I'll just put some yellow on top of it. That's going to be fine. Okay, that kind of burnishes it a little, doesn't it? When you press really hard, that word burnish means rub it, make it waxy. Okay, now I'm going to go back with my pencil and I'm going to put in these branches right here with the leaves. And these are very easy. She's doing a good job. Okay, skinny. At the end, wider at the middle, at the end here where it starts. And then I'm going to put these little, like these would be like these little stems. My, my leaves are going to come off of these. These are just curved lines. 
they're going to meet in the middle. Curve line, curve line, curve line, curve line. This, this is going to make my picture seem more interesting. Then I'll just go through here and give it a straight line like that. Like the vein. Oh, didn't quite go on the middle, but that's okay. Okay, I think I'll put one over here too. Small one. Maybe I'll put another set right here. And if this goes behind the snake, well, that's good because it makes it seem more like depth, doesn't it? That's one way to make depth, is to put some object in front of another or behind another. Okay, and I'm going to, I'm going to put one down at the bottom, too. Whoop, there, he's going to go behind that snake there. And I think I'll just put one here. See how easy it is to make leaves, curve lines like that. And this one is going off of my paper, which is interesting. That's okay. Maybe I'll make one leaf right here. Okay. So, my focal point is my snake. That's what's going to catch my eye. I'm getting my dark green. My dark green. Where is my dark green? Here it is. I didn't recognize it because it has kind of yellow paper. Okay, I'm going to color in these leaves lightly. Um, it doesn't matter if I still see some white. Did you drop something? Let me get it for you. Wow, June, that is a colorful snake. You did a lot of work on that. Color this in here. I'm going to put other layers of green on top of it too to make it look a little more real. So it's okay, like I said, if I'm not using, if I'm, if I'm leaving some white spaces, that's okay. There are some white spaces. Do you need some leaves, Joan? June? You're getting them? Good. It's so special having someone come. We'll have to do this more often. All right, coloring them in. Moving very quickly. This makes me think of summertime. That's when you see snakes, the summer. Don't really see them in the winter because they're reptiles. They get their their heat from the sun. They crawl out of their dens. I guess you call them dens, snake dens, snake holes. They crawl out of them in the morning in the sun and they have to lay there and let the sun warm up their body temperature. They're not like us. They're cold-blooded. We're warm-blooded. Okay, I'm going to take my brown and makes my stems. My branches. This is just a lot of layers. This picture. And look, it has a foreground, a middle ground, a background, and it has a really big focal point where my eye goes as soon as I look at this picture, my eye goes right there. Okay, I'm going to take a yellow green, put another layer on just real lightly. But look what that did. That changed it so much and makes it look so much more interesting. That looks really good. You could put as many layers of colors on it as you want. Do you ever look at the trees in the golden hour? We like to sit outside and have dinner on our patio. And then the golden hour will come and there's a one of those big Japanese maples that's red. 
next door in Mrs. Keene's house in her yard. It looks so pretty during the golden hour. Okay, all right. Now there's that, those layers are all done. Here's our crins over here. I'm finished with them. Now I'm going to take a Sharpie. Wow, June, that's so pretty. She's keeping up, she's doing really well. I'm gonna do my snake first because I think it's exciting. My snake, here he is. Now, I like to pull my pen towards me. I think it goes better because sometimes when you try to push it, well, it it'll work, kind of. Now, I'm doing it here and it's working all right. But sometimes it's a little harder to push a pen than it is to pull it. Okay, and I'm trying to take long strokes. Ooh. And I got off a little right there, but that's all right. All right, I'm going to pull it here. Now these Sharpies are permanent, but they will go over, they will go over crayons, which is nice. But you don't want to get them on your clothes. It's probably a good idea to have your art shirt on for this project. Okay, now I'm going to do my branch. Looking good. Now I'm going to do my stripes. Outline my stripes. See that, remember I told you a line's a little dot? That just keeps moving. I thought that was a good definition of a line. I sure enjoy it when you post your pictures so I can see them. Because I saw some of your landscapes from last time. Was it last time that we did landscape? Did that cute painting with all those little blobs and made a landscape. Okay, there, now my snake is finished. So I'm gonna do his eyes and then I'm gonna outline his black tongue. I would not want a black tongue. Okay, now I'm going to do my branches. This is easy. And then here I'm going to just pull them towards me and come down the middle. Now if you want to take the time to put in, you know, those vein things, you may. All right, because that would, that would make it look nice. And I have to hold my paper here. I'm pushing my paper. It's a little harder. Pushing my pen. There. Now I'm going to turn my paper over. I'm going to get this part right here. It doesn't have to be perfect because tree branches, they're lumpy and bumpy and they change all around and that's what makes them perfect. Because our Father in Heaven is the very best creator and he lets us create things, doesn't he? We get to create pictures and cookies and worlds and mud pies. You ever make mud pies? Picnics. We get to create a lot of things. Create really nice things for our neighbors. That's the best. Nice dinners. Nice clean dishes. Taking out the trash. Do any of you boys get to chop wood with your dad? Okay. 
all done with all of our outlining. That took a little while. Hey, that looks so good. Wow, June is really doing well. Now I'm going to take my oil pastel. Remember we had scumbling, that word scumble, where we take our pastel and we use it on the side to make texture. This kind of goes fast. That's one reason I like this. Does, does June need a little one? Now this is kind of a dark blue, so don't press too hard. Or here's a, here's a teensy weensy light blue if you want to try it. And lay it on its side, June, like this. Look, June. Lay it like this and rub with the side. Okay, I'm going to put in here. I'm going to try not to get it on my snake. See how this makes it go kind of fast and it gives it a nice texture too, doesn't it? Now remember when we were talking about contrast and complementary colors? This blue that I'm using for my sky with my next to my warm colors in my snake really makes it stand out. And that's what I want. I want you to be able to see my snake because that's my focal point. Look, look, this is skinny. I'll just get it in here. If I don't get every inch of the paper with blue, that is okay because I'm going to come back with the crayon and touch it up a little. Oh, we have an exciting bird today. I can't wait for you to see it. It's so amazing. We were watching this baby bird follow his mommy around under these bushes last night or while we were eating dinner. And it makes this it's noise. It's almost like a buzz, a whistly buzz. And it just followed his mother everywhere and wanted him to f wanted her to feed him. And she was very patient. She did. She kept finding these bugs, which I'm really glad. He was about as big as she was, but didn't look the same. Sometimes baby birds look bigger than their parents because they're really fluffy. All right. Here I am. Okay, so now I have some places where I can touch him up just a little with some blue. Just a little. And look, if I do it in here in between these small sections, it almost makes it look like it's a shadowy place, a darker place, doesn't it? Does that look good? or maybe next to the leaves. Some of the places that are kind of whitish, I'm just filling it in a little. This gives it a little more depth. When you do art, you learn how to color things, how to place things in certain ways that create depth and focal points. And it's kind of, you probably are learning a lot about that when you take your pictures for your contests. Okay, just a tiny bit more. Wow, what a good job. June, when we get all done, we'll show everybody your picture, okay? Okay, so I'm just going around right next to him, making it a little, giving it a little more few layers. And then we'll be ready. I have some interesting things to tell you about this special bird. And you're probably seeing it around because that's what we tried to do with the Art Takes Flight is birds. Backyard birds. 
that you would see around here. I see these kind of birds, these surprise birds, every day. You probably do too, especially if you have a flower garden. Okay, maybe a little more up here. June, are you about finished? Are you about ready to show everybody your picture? Yeah? yeah? Can you come over here by me? That was good how she said yes. I like that. Okay. All right, come over here, darling. Isn't that so gorgeous? You did a nice job. That was a lot of work. And I love the different colors and textures in her blue. All right, I'll show you mine, too. I think June's is a little brighter. She must have pressed harder. That's so good. There we have it. Oh, do you notice it's upside down? Nobody told me. <laughs> These were upside down. See, our snake is just hanging around. Can you get them both at the same time? This one's... Yeah, this one's right. There we go. Okay. June, why don't you sit on my lap? Ooh! Can you get your legs under there? All right. Are you ready? Can you say, art takes flight? Art takes flight. Yes, art takes flight. We're ready. This way? Turn your, okay. Yes? This bird, June, can you see it? This is a tiny little bird. This is called a Rufus hummingbird. And these are the kind that you see around here the most often. The word Rufus means like goldy, brownish, reddish, orange color. See that on his little chest right there. And then on the back, he has green and purple. Okay, let's look at another picture of him. See, there he is. They are about four inches long. It's about this long. Did you know that God made this one hummingbird that it's the size of a bee? It doesn't live around here, but can you imagine a bird that teeny? It would be so amazing. They love to fly around and drink nectar from the flowers. They especially like red ones. Look at that. Now there's the mommy with her two babies. They usually lay two eggs and they have two babies and the eggs are the size of jelly beans. Well, there he is again. Look how bright he is. Of course, that's the dad. They're the bright colors. Now there's two babies. Let me tell you about their nests. So amazing. The nests, they start out about as big on the inside as a penny. See that penny? Can you believe that? And she lays her eggs in there. She makes it out of uh, little fluffy uh, seeds like from dandelions and down from different plants like that that are really super soft and then on the outside she takes spider webs and she wraps it all around the outside and it stretches as the babies get bigger. Isn't that so amazing? And when the, when the mom is sitting on the nest uh, hummingbirds are so tiny they have to eat and drink their nectar really often. So she'll sit on the nest for about 50 minutes and then she, she'll take 10 minutes off and go feed. They weigh about as much as a penny. Uh, these little nests well, then here's the other thing she'll do to them after the spider web, the down and the spider webs. And then she'll take lichen and moss and decorate it up on the outside to kind of make it um, camouflage. And she'll even get some, if you have wood uh, paint, 
on your wood on your house that's starting to chip. She'll even take paint chips and put it around the edge there to make it more colorful. The thing about hummingbird nests is you'll probably never, ever, ever find one because they're so teeny and so camouflaged. Now let's listen to the sound. Oh, and they like to, they, they really protect their territories, the dads do. And you'll, they'll chase each other away and fight with each other. Now, You hear those little squeaks and those little twitters? Those are called chirp, chirp notes, chirp. I can't remember what it's called, chirp something. And that buzzing is the sound of their wings because they, they go, they, they flap their wings 60 times a second. That is so fast. Okay. Sometimes when you're outside in the flower garden, you'll hear that buzzing like that or those chirps and you look around for the hummingbirds. If you're really still, you might see them coming and drinking nectar from your flowers, especially the red ones. All right. Well, this was a fun project. I hope you enjoyed it. This was great having a special guest you ready to say goodbye? Bye. Bye. Let's wave. Let's smile. See you soon. We love you.